Hi, welcome to doing a devotion with me. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to be reading another devotion from My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Uh, it, today is called Visions Becoming Reality. I'm actually pretty excited to read this one. Uh, before we get started, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for who you are. You are big and mighty and awesome and powerful and creator of the heavens and the earth. You see today, yesterday, and tomorrow. God, you know all of the days of our lives. And I pray, God, that you would be with us today, Lord, that we would feel your presence, Lord, that we would know the peace that comes from knowing that our God is personal, that he loves us, that he is beside us, he is with us. Lord, I pray that you would be with each person who is listening. God, that you would surround them with your presence and that they would be able to have a time of peace. Lord, a time, a quiet time with you where they could be challenged, Lord, and they could grow deeper in their relationship with you. Lord, we praise you and we bless your mighty name. And God, if there's anything that you would have me share, May it come from your heart and not from my own. I pray that my, my mouth, my voice, my lips would be yours. And that you would be glorified in everything done. We praise your mighty name. Amen. Visions becoming reality. And Isaiah 35, 7. The burning sand will become a pool the thirsty grounds bubbling springs, in the haunts where the jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. We will always have a vision of something before it actually becomes real to us. When we are realizing that vision is real, but is not yet real in us, Satan comes to us with his temptations and we are inclined to say that there is no point in even trying to continue. Instead of the vision becoming real to us, we have entered into a valley of humiliation. Life is not as idle ore, but iron dug from central gloom um, and battered by the shocks of doom to shape and use. God gives us a vision and then he takes us down to the valley to batter us into the shape of that vision. It is in the valley that so much of us, so many of us give up in fate. Every God-given vision will become real if we will only have patience. Just think of the enormous amount of free time God has. He's never in a hurry, yet we are always in such a frantic hurry. While still in the light of the glory of the vision, we go right out and do things. But the vision is not yet real in us. God has to take us into the valley and put us through the fires and floods to batter us into shape until we get to the point where, we, where he can trust us with the reality of the vision. Ever since God gave us the vision, he has been at work. He is getting us into shape, the shape of the goal he has for us. And yet over and over again, we try to escape from the sculptor's hand in an effort to batter ourselves into the shape of our own goal. The vision that God gives is not some unattainable castle in the sky, but a vision of what God wants you to be down here. Allow the potter to put you on his wheel and whirl you around as he desires. Then as surely as God is God and you are you, you will turn out exactly in the, an exact likeness of that vision. But don't lose heart in the process. If you've ever had a vision from God, you may try as you will to be satisfied on a lower level, but God will never allow it. Mm. Dang. <laughs> Sorry. It's just so, so big. There's so much. I just, 
I have words. I have lots of thoughts. I just want to share them in a good order. When a potter, when a creator of any kind, I have lots of friends who are very creative and they're artists and they just, or they create, they, well, they're artists, they create. And I don't think I've ever heard of one of them saying that their creation turned and looked at them and said, sorry, I'm going to do something else with my life <laughs> and walk away. And when we have chosen to be Christians, when we've given our lives over to God, we have given ourselves as clay into the master craftsman's hands. And he is molding us into not just beautiful works of art, but we're functional, beautiful works of art. We have a purpose. We have, we're tools. And a tool can't tell its creator what it's made for. And we have to just be patient and wait to be made into the, the exact to beautiful created tool that God wants. And sometimes it takes forever. And I just think that that's, that's a beautiful picture. And the fact that it's not just who we are, but it's often the vision that God has given us that we also have to be created and recreated and remolded into who God needs us to be so that we can go and do what he's called us to do. I just think it's really cool. And I don't ever want to be the person who tries to tell God what I'm supposed to be. And I know I've done it uh, probably a thousand times over, but my deepest desire, and I pray that your deepest desire is that God would make you into the man or woman of God he has called you to be, so that when he gives you vision, it's not so much a breaking process and, and then a reshaping process to make you uh, into the person you need to be to move into that vision and to move into that, that uh, that journey, I guess, and um, but that you would simply be soft clay in the potter's hands, that he could reshape you into who you need to be for that time. One of the things that I've seen in being a pastor's daughter is that my parents have always been in small churches, and often there's a need for different types of people in the church and they don't have that and God has molded them and remolded them and molded them and remolded them into who the church needs at that time and I imagine it's been very difficult but I also know that God can use you for different purposes at different times just because you've been a leader forever doesn't mean you're going to be a leader always just because you've been in music doesn't mean God's not going to use you to teach and it's just we have to humble ourselves and be okay with the fact that our role in in ministry our role in life our role as children of God are not it's not going to always look the same my goodness the last nine months has been very humbling um, getting married and having my whole life change and moving into a new church. God has taken me out of the roles that I've always been in in a church and it's changed so much. And I just, I'm just astounded at how God's vision for our lives can change who we are so much, but it's always, always, always for the better and for his glory. <sighs> yeah. I hope that that touched your heart. It is Oswald Chambers' message from today, so July 6th. So you can always look it up and read it again if you want to. I pray that you will be so blessed today. And remember, you are so loved. Bye.